to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Truths that relate to the new birth and redemption. It is important, for instance, that believers understand the entire scope of the work of salvation. You will be amazed at how many believers, and respectfully speaking, even leaders in the body of Christ, who cannot intelligently articulate the work of redemption. It's like a doctor with no knowledge of anatomy, no knowledge of physiology. How did you become a doctor? Are we together now? These are foundational truths. Believers have to understand what happened from the beginning. They have to understand the fall of man. They have to understand Jesus as perfect theology. The mystery of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. These are foundational pillars. We may differ in our levels of our approach to ministry, but these are foundational pillars of the Christian faith. If they are not known, we cannot walk in victory. Truths like the identity and the authority of the believer in Christ. Paul, as part of his apostolic ministry, took out time all through the epistles, especially the book of Ephesians when you read. He took out time to give a very clear exegesis of the truth of God's word to help the believers understand their position in Christ. There is a positional advantage that we have in Christ and believers must understand this. If we do not understand these basic truths and then you go to deeper and weightier matters of the spirit you will find out that we become ever learning but never coming into the experience the knowledge of the truth this is the tragedy of the average believer we are not in ignorance but there is we have a deluge of spiritual truth whose relevance we cannot point in our lives we know almost every topic we know almost every great teaching but to be able to sequentially arrange them and produce constructive victory in our lives, most times we do not know how to combine them. The concept of sin, the concept of righteousness, the concept of uprightness, the concept of holiness, the concept of salvation, the concept of the gospel. These are very important. I'm just running through very intelligent spiritual issues that every congregation, every man of God who intends to build a people of power and grace must ensure that somewhere in their growth process, these foundational truths are captured in their experiences. Lack of the understanding of these things will give the devil an edge over the believer. Are we together? Then the ministry of the word of God. This is a doctrinal truth that we must understand. What is the value of the word of God? The average believer studies the Bible, studies scripture, and exposes himself to spiritual truth just to ease the guilt of not looking spiritual or to conform to a religious ritual. The Bible talks about the logos of God. John 1 verse 1. It says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God very powerful scripture so you have to understand what the word of God is because the Bible tells us that man shall not live by bread alone but that he must live by every truth that proceeds from the mouth of God then the ministry of the Holy Spirit listen let me tell you there are so many believers who want to walk in the reality of the power and the glory of God many sincere preachers many in the body they want to enjoy certain levels of victory but they have not been taught constructively taught about the person and the ministry of the holy spirit even though the holy spirit plays a very vital role in salvation there is a separate encounter with the person and the office of the holy spirit are we together then we talk about kingdom living. We now begin to bring believers into the revelation of the kingdom. Jesus began to talk to us about the kingdom. What is the kingdom? The character of the kingdom. I'm showing you 
doctrinal truths that if ignored there is no church happening i guarantee you then kingdom concepts like faith kingdom concepts like hope like love like peace these are very powerful truths that must be taught the believer you have to understand what the peace of god is what it means to live and walk in love the power of hope the power of faith the bible talks about faith being a shield it says wherein with it will be able to quench every fiery dart of the enemy then we now come into subjects of the realm of the spirit the reality of the satanic kingdom that has been so ignored by many people in an attempt to show the excellency of the reality of the finished work of christ we have ignored the fact that there is a devil roaming around our horizon and the bible tells us to not be ignorant of his devices this is where truths that deal and relate with spiritual warfare the reality of the satanic kingdom the fact that there are real demons who are out to sabotage the purposes of god in the life of the saints and that if the saints are not equipped with the requisite level of spiritual intelligence then we may not be able to walk in victory are we together then we come to the ministry of prayer prayer was such a powerful subject that the disciples came to jesus and said teach us to pray so you don't just learn prayer by praying alone you are taught how to pray their issue was not prayerlessness their issue was inaccurate prayer there was something about the prayer of jesus and the result that came from his prayer and they said teach us to pray then he began to teach them he says when you pray pray thus he didn't just say recite these words it's a spiritual formula abba father when you pray pray with the acknowledgement that there is a source a sustainer a defender then he says which art in heaven that means you will need faith in your prayer because it's not in your domain you are interacting with two realms then hallowed be your name that you come to him with the spirit of reverence your kingdom come prioritize the kingdom because if the kingdom comes many things you want to ask for will no longer be needed jesus is teaching prayer so that when you go to the place of prayer you are not just shadow boxing and dissipating spiritual energy that cannot produce results this is largely what we do just because we dissipate a lot of spiritual energy we convince ourselves that on the strength of the enormity of the energy that is dissipated we are making contact in the spirit it may not be so one man prayed and a territory was shot it was it was deprived of rain one correct prayer then we talk about the subject of kingdom advancement listen if you're a man of god here you may want to write some of these things down and build a catalog of your spiritual your mentorship system to the members this this is these are the truths that members should come to receive they are not opinions they are doctrines these are the truths the pillars upon which the maturity of the saints depend on kingdom advance if believers are not king are not taught kingdom advance we are going to live purposeless lives acquiring things that have no eternal value what gives credence to subjects like prosperity and the rest is kingdom subjects like prosperity health advancement success they find their correct bearing when they are, the subjects are dealt with with respect to kingdom if kingdom is not in view it is risky and dangerous even destructive to mentor people and teach them these things because all of these things are spiritual arsenals that were supposed to help the believer to become efficient to an end the end is thy kingdom come are we still together then we talk about subjects like purpose and destiny never downplay the fact that believers need to find fulfillment in their lives they will not indefinitely just be career people they will not indefinitely just be church goers for many years sooner or later they will have to confront the subject of meaning what is my life about 
nobody will waste his time indefinitely no matter how sincere you are as a man of god as a preacher as a spiritual platform you must be able to mentor the people to find meaning for their lives it is lack of meaning that exposes people to all kinds of violence when people do not live for a cause that is bigger than their needs they can become prey to the devil purpose and destiny very powerful it defines the coordinate for your focus it gives you discipline it helps to channel your energy constructively so you wake up in the morning justifiably so and you sleep late you sleep in the night with joy in your heart knowing that you're making constructive advancement then we have to talk about truths like the end times the reality of the afterlife is a subject that many people may not want to touch the bible says if our hope is only in this life this world it says we are of all men most miserable to understand the gravity of that statement you have to examine how miserable men look because the bible says you have a miserable man at any level is not a good sight and then the bible says you are of all men most miserable it is true that jesus is coming back and my goodness there are all kinds of doctrinal and theological and archaeological arguments as to it believers must be able to find comfort why because in a congregation like this sincerely speaking even though it is not our intention as time progresses people will lost will lose loved ones is that true people will have to mourn loved ones either because their time is up or for some reason and there must be a doctrinal foundation that gives them strength at that point it takes more than an impulsive comfort for two three days people must derive sustainable strength on a revelation of what happens after this life it is on the strength of that you can now say like paul for for me to live is christ and to die is gain so if you declare long life is not out of fear it's because you need time to make kingdom come happen but if at all the flight comes you go with joy knowing that you have cheated death already is god helping us these are the doctrinal truths these are like spiritual classes schools of the spirit that you have to pass through you cannot go through these things and still be weak and be tossed to and fro the bible says it is for this that the bible says ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 10 to this end the bible says he gave unto some apostles and prophets evangelists pastors teachers for the maturing the equipping of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry to the end that will attain that stature in the spirit it says not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive stability comes through doctrine then we will not also neglect matters of life like the economic system of the kingdom look at me did you know that the kingdom of god has an economic system that must be studied there are different systems all across this cosmos but god has his economic system that means there is a kingdom provision for the welfare of the saints it is irresponsible and i submit to you with all due respect it is irresponsible for a man of god to have the privilege of being with a congregation for many years and not expose them to the economic system of the kingdom because these are matters of life it's not just about prayer and trusting god to come there are school fees to be paid there are real issues that pertain unto life and if believers are not taught they will have to adopt any option that is available and most of the options you would have to trade your soul in exchange so he said what shall it profit a man if you will gain these are business languages gain the world and lose your soul it says i wish above all things that you prosper and be in health there is an economic system designed for the kingdom and i will respectfully observe that the challenge with the body of christ is that most times our doctrines are inaccurately communicated that means it's it's is garnished with a plethora of imbalances 
so on one hand we have people who teach believers for instance that all it takes to prosper is just to focus on the spiritual laws of tithing and giving and sowing and that is wonderful there is a place for that and then they ignore the fact that there are principles of value and productivity that synergize themselves together to make believers exceptional so believers continue to obey the spiritual laws the spiritual laws are responsible for the arrival of the blessings but the natural laws are they arrive they are responsible for the sustenance if you do not know this you will keep having short-lived testimonies one breakthrough and then after five years another one comes the economic system of the kingdom then of course we have to teach believers on things that relate to relationships family life we are relational beings the command be fruitful is a very serious command be fruitful there does not just mean have children be fruitful means be relational because everything multiplies through relationships your business your job your work with God and until we understand principles of relationship prophecy will keep bringing opportunities that lack of knowledge of relationships will keep canceling out of believers lives there are many people who receive prophetic words may God connect you to destiny help us may God lift you they say amen but not understanding the requisite principles for maintaining and attracting relationships they will be spiritual pray in tongues but if you do not have this as a pastor, as a man of God, you will never have sustainable membership. Because the membership affects people before your members. And there are, there, there are principles, not only spiritual principles, psychological principles that must be in place. Let me tell you, human beings are not stupid. They will not indefinitely be loyal to someone and a cause without an interplay of these truths. If you are with me, say Amen. Probably God is revealing to someone right now. This is just an introduction. Whilst you've heard me speak, God is telling you, you see the area you have ignored. The area of loophole, the area of, of ignorance, the area of carelessness in your life becomes the access point of Satan. Now, we celebrated wonderful testimonies here from people who miraculously, within a week, Look, the wonder-working power of God. Now, the anointing has played its own course. It's left for them to understand the principles of relationship now to sustain that breakthrough. Is that true? So, receiving a prophetic word is not enough. You have to be equipped with truths like the law of honor to understand these principles. So, when you say a believer is matured, you don't just mean he has been around spiritual things for a long time no it means that he has actively been mentored believers must submit themselves to mentorship not the idea of mentorship we have in our world today that has become an evil and a destructive usurping of the right and the will of men I'm talking of mentorship, a system where you submit yourself to a body of spiritual truth to the end that you'll be edified and be matured. This is the assignment of doctrine. Are we blessed? To see you high and lifted up You are shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Here's the prayer. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. It's a real prayer. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see hallelujah two men were with the resurrected Christ on the way to Emmaus just because they were at proximity with the word did not mean that they had an encounter you can be close to spiritual things for many years and convince yourself that just because you are around spiritual things you are growing they were with Jesus and yet did not recognize him but the Bible says when the bed was broken eyes open.
can you pray whilst you are seated lord open my eyes let this be a journey of transformation let this be a journey of growth please pray hallelujah praise the name of the lord so for tonight just spare me a few minutes and we're done listen week in week out when you come did you know why we pray that god should bring people we don't pray for people just to celebrate a crowd it's more than that it's a passion to reach as many people there are 3.2 million people demographically speaking in this city if we're unable to reach at least 300,000 people with the truth of God's word to mature them, we're wasting your time and we're wasting God's time. <laughs> yes. You have to believe this. So when you are dragging someone to church, you are not trying to help a ministry grow. You are looking at him and like a doctor. You can scan through his life. While he comes to say my life, you can see the spiritual gaps. You, you know the laws he's breaking in an instant. And you know if God does not help this man, just agreeing and praying will not solve the problem. Because the truths that this person needs to learn are many. It is on the, that is what sponsors your compassion. When you draw someone to the house of God, you are already excited because more than an instant miracle, he now has the opportunity to be immersed in this spiritual truth. So he leaves that service with an enlightened understanding and he will thank you for it. While the word of God is coming, he can see the gaps in his life. There is a grace given to a man that can open the eyes of men. Is the grace that causes all men to see. So you can see your life in light of this truth. And you can say, wow, I now see why my church is not growing. It's not because I'm not from this city. I now see this may be what I may be doing wrong. And then because you are told to receive with meekness the engrafted word, you are not ashamed of God exposing your area of growth. It's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday. And you receive it with truth. Then you go back like the foxes of Samson and you will do mighty and terrible things for the kingdom. This is what I seek by the Spirit of God that will happen in our lives. That week in, let me tell you the truth. I give you a guarantee. If you come here week in, week out and you cannot constructively measure your spiritual growth, I am wasting your time. Please look for something important and do with your life. Are we together many times we teach that all you need one encounter with the word is all you need that's a very sincere statement but that's incomplete many people have encountered the word for many years it is the truth that is accurately taught that you receive with understanding and you engage appropriately that produces for you not the truth available access to truth does not transform no it must be accurately taught then it must be understood then it must be received by faith the principles contained therein applied diligently then you can commit god's integrity to perform hallelujah let's talk about spiritual growth tonight let's start from there where we're starting from the very foundation this is a new work and so we'll just start and trust God for grace to build us as far as he can help us. If we're together, say amen. amen. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. Please, let's rush. We have to trust God for grace to be very fast tonight. And then we pray. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. We're discussing the subject of spiritual growth. Please read with me if you can see it projected inside and outside. Ready? Read when i was a child aha uh -huh, i spake as a child i understood as a child i thought as a child but when i became a man i put away childish things please keep that scripture there paul is admonishing the church in corinth part of his apostolic ministry 
and he's talking about the characteristic features that represent childishness in the kingdom that you know a child number one by how you speak you know a child number two by your level of spiritual understanding are we together you know a child by your thought process because your life is a reflection of your thought so we can piece this together and accurately gauge the spiritual level of a man the way that you speak your degree of comprehension and the way you think the way you process spiritual things when I was a child he said this also talks about transition when I was once upon a time he was a child this is a very powerful message because it means men can grow it's a it's a revelation I can come out of my former self into a new version of me that means the version you saw last week while you are talking about that one I have grown you are talking about the version that cannot heal the sick you are talking about the version that is ignorant and that we can evolve into superior dimensions of ourselves in this kingdom very powerful so you can see one who is weak he may even come out for salvation prayer and you watch that person and you're like wow when is this guy going to understand spiritual things just give the person the atmosphere of growth and sometimes as little as weeks under a very correct system of growth you will be surprised what will happen to that person when I was a child I spoke like a child understood as a child and I thought as a child but when I became a man what happened I pushed childish things childish speaking childish understanding childish thinking if you're with me say amen write this down please growth refers to increase in size increase in capacity increase in convictions increase in resources growth refers to increase of all kinds increase in size for instance increase in capacity increase in convictions increase in resources God expects believers to grow. The Bible is full of um, admonishments for believers to grow. God desires that we grow biologically. God desires that we grow intellectually. God desires that we grow career-wise for career people. God desires that we grow financially like we spoke about earlier on. But for this, for tonight, the subject of focus is spiritual growth luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the bible says and jesus grew or he increased luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and jesus increased the bible says jesus your jesus had to grow he increased in wisdom in stature and in favor with god and with man hallelujah write this down please spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a christian not necessarily Luke chapter 11 and verse 52 spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian just because you gave your life to Jesus in 1990 or 2000 or 2010 the the passage of time does not necessarily equate spiritual growth listen to this Jesus is speaking to the scribes he says woe to you lawyers for you have taken the key of knowledge you've been here for a long time you have refused to enter yourself and you have stopped others from entering most times we pride ourselves just because we have memory of the day that we came out to make an altar call and you hear people say things like i have been a christian for 20 years now that's worth being uh, that's worth um, our applause i'm not downplaying it but i'm saying just because you gave your life to christ it's like someone who bought a car in 2000 and just because a car is in his house he tells you he's a driver no the presence of a car does not necessarily mean the ability to drive spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a christian write this point again spiritual growth is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of religious activities 
spiritual growth is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of spiritual activities second timothy chapter 3 and verse 7 that means just because you've been around church for a long time and you've been engaging in spiritual activities it does not necessarily mean that you are growing spiritually paul was teaching his son timothy doctrine and he said there are a kind of people who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth wow preach preacher wow wonderful and just because you've been falling under the anointing for a long time just because you've been around crusades you've been around great programs when they say who are those who have been in church for a long time you will stand up but when we look through your life we do not see the indices that represent spiritual growth is God helping us there is a tragedy please look up there is a consequence for not contending for spiritual growth if you are not exposed to the consequences of remaining a child in the spirit you will not aspire for higher dimensions because you see many times and depending on what kind of spiritual platform we're exposed to many times we find ourselves in situations where we are not encouraged to press into god it's like the most important thing is to give your life to jesus like we say and the moment you have received jesus that's all right after all whatever it is it is heaven there are severe consequences for remaining at that level biologically speaking mothers when you give birth to a child you don't flog that child from day one for not walking you give him some allowance but after a year, two years, three years, you find out your child cannot walk, your child cannot talk, that becomes a medical issue. Is that true? I have put down here three, three tragedies that will befall any believer who does not contend for spiritual growth. Please walk with me. Let's hurry up. Is God blessing us tonight? Number one, the first tragedy that befalls a believer who does not contend for growth is in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened. Look up please. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Do you know what this means? That means even though you have received the Zoe life, watch this, you have received the life of God, it does not mean it will be manifest in your life automatically. The riches of that which you have received that resides in Christ is released through knowledge. And if you do not contend for spiritual growth, you may never actualize in experience the potentials that are captured in this life. So, two believers, come. This is my great generals. Just come close to me. By the way, this is Sam, ladies and gentlemen. For many of you, you've heard me say Sam. And those of you who have been blessed by the song, you reign. Elohim. Here's the person who wrote the song. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. Let me have your attention again. Watch this. Now, did you know that these guys can be born again at the same time? Are we together? filled with the holy spirit at the same time but this man may be subject to a very constructive mentorship system and five years down the line you will see the quality of his christian experience all wise you will see that the reality the riches the 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 manifestation of that life that he has so received when you look at it you will see the quality of his life this man even though truly he's given his life to christ you do not see evidences that demonstrate the reality of the victory of Christ in his life. The difference is not the love of God. The same Lord is rich unto all. The difference is that one has submitted to a system that makes for growth, whereas the other one has been stunted or wallowing around in religion. Decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to grow spiritually so the potential the potential that this life of god that we have this divine life is released as we grow 
if you do not grow it will only remain in theory that you are a partaker of this divine life but nothing in your life will show forth the excellency of that victory that is in Christ are we together tragedy number two what happens to a believer who refuses to contend for growth Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1 Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1 now I say that an heir an heir means a partaker of a throne a, a, a benefactor of an inheritance but for as long as he is a child he is no different from a servant some version says slave even though potentially he was designed to be Lord of all look up please the Bible says if you do not grow your experience as one who is in the kingdom and one who is outside the kingdom will be no different does it make sense to you why believers receive the same result as unbelievers it is because just receiving the life of Christ and not contending for growth your results will not change the dynamics that make your life to release the victory that is in Christ experientially is only released at the instance of growth oh, 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 oh. Tragedy number three. What is the third tragedy for refusing to contend for spiritual growth? Is found in Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Please give it to us. Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Watch this now. Paul again is teaching. He said, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing that you are dull of hearing. We're reading to verse 14, verse 12 now. It says, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles or the doctrines of God, and have become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. 13, for everyone that useth milk, everyone that is a child is what? Unskillful. Look up. Let me explain what this means to you. When you watch a consultant, when he looks at a patient, while the patient is talking, all of a sudden, the, the myriads of medical truths that he knows, everything is working in an instant. He looks at this and says, oh, I remember. There we have one in a million of these cases however I think I know what to do about it on the strength of his mastery a student doctor can look at that and crack his brain and the information there is limited so he can do his best although he's a doctor in the making he can even be a fresh graduate and not be able to do much this is what it means to be unskillful so if you do not grow spiritually you can't be a blessing because when people speak to you you don't know what law they are violating and how to help them so you begin to come up with sympathetic statements like one day go better and the bible says you are unskillful you are not like one who is moving with uncanny mastery when you grow spiritually if a family calls you as a man of god we're in trouble what is the trouble all doors are closed uh -huh, immediately the scriptures that will bail them out comes to you you can almost tell them i know what is wrong i know what is wrong it's powerful to know how to help people not just how to sympathize with people you are a blessing to the degree to which you can help someone comes to you now and says i hear that you are a member of this great ministry nothing is working in my life delays there is there's no restoration the moment you hear restoration you know all through scripture everywhere there were losses is the prophetic that brought it back so restoration is exclusively the ministry of the prophetic so you don't just tell that person let's pray god help him that's a careless prayer you seek to introduce him to a true prophetic voice they are taken for a prayer and none say it restore 
this is what it means to be skillful someone comes to you and says i am gifted i'm a graduate but doors are not opening up i have a business and you know exactly what is there because you see james 2 26 says a body without a spirit is dead the business is a body where is the spirit that gives it life so you know what to introduce are you getting blessed if you refuse to grow spiritually you become unskillful you cannot help yourself and you cannot help people this is the tragedy with the poor is responsible for what outcome mastering the spirit is to be able to connect spiritual laws and their desired outcomes so when you see people and they cry you know what spiritual law to help them with like a doctor when a patient says i'm running temperature and um, i've not been able to eat i even threw up you are not a doctor but help me guess what you think is wrong who taught you that although you are not a doctor notice you did not say run his stomach but don't you know that cholera he also vomits why didn't you say cholera because there are certain things you have been taught through experience that when a patient behaves like this this is how to help the person this can happen to you spiritually listen to me i'm teaching you this so after the grace some of you will run home and say come i found what the problem is i know exactly why this family is not rising yes sir yes sir with accuracy you can know when mama comes to say are you seeing this i went to bed and i had a dream i saw someone speaking to me and he said in this family for the last hundred years nobody has risen and everyone is putting their hand on their head and you now join them what is the excellency of your spiritual investment but the issue is not just saying let's pray don't mind the devil you say that thing you would die like a chicken because many people have arrogantly made bold claims don't stand before pharaoh until you see the burning bush if you have not seen the burning bush leave pharaoh alone your encounter with the burning bush is what supplies the strength and stamina you can stand before pharaoh and say toss say yet not me the one i met let my people go because pharaoh is stubborn god does not hide the fact that pharaoh is stubborn he will say oh god spoke go mm -mm. he will say who is that you have to show him a token of your encounter that i really met him so you don't talk like people who are not born again when believers are lamenting what is wrong you go to scripture what are the truths the assignment of men of god is to expose you to the various doctrinal bodies of truth that equip you so that you are equipped with sufficient spiritual arsenals on the strength of that you can now go if you are in your office and someone beats his chest and say except i am not this you will not rise you don't need to start talking as if you are not born ah, mm, and leave him in peace that man you see you should even be pitying him while he's speaking based on what you know if you actually engage what you know you know that it will cause more destruction for that man so you will search which one can manage the situation and leave the man as a witness listen sit down please don't be excited for nothing look at me this is how dominion is produced dominion is not just an impartation is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom you surround yourself with the principles of the kingdom like chariots they make you a wonder to behold so when you say you are matured in the spirit it's not just by physical stature it's not by the huskiness of the voice it's on the strength of the spiritual arsenals you have so pieced together you have fine-tuned them they are like weapons of war you shoot them with the accuracy of the benjamites one sling and goliath goes down low 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory 
cover us with your wings. No, 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 like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Please sit down. Is God helping us? Yes. So, all of the dimensions that we seek to walk in in the kingdom, they have a body of spiritual truth that is responsible for their lifting. You are a blessing only when you move with these truths. They follow you. Listen, the Bible said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Do you know what that means? When I see what is following you, it's a report card to what you believe. So when I see favor and open doors following you, they are not following you. They are following what you believe. If you want to drive them, don't ask them to go. Change what you believe. They will leave. There are many things we do not want in our lives. You don't drive them by saying, leave me. They are, were designed to honor that belief. If you take it out of your life, they will leave you with it. Hallelujah. Let's wrap up tonight indices to measure spiritual growth let me give you four spiritual indices that help the believer to measure spiritual growth pray in the spirit in one minute as you are seated four indices that help the believer to measure spiritual growth thank you jesus ah. from the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends someone's life is changing my goodness from the pages of my heart let my worship begin that never ends to the god of all flesh you're my god and your name is yahweh your name is Yahweh, Yahweh, you're my God and your name is Yahweh. We're about to measure to what degree we have grown in the spirit and with it challenge ourselves let me give you an advice never be ashamed when the word of god comes sustain the ability to tremble at his word without any sense of shame when minister frecker was here he said we should lift our hands like children that is the attitude he said let the little children come to me he says do not forbid them for for such the kingdom of God requires childlike approach. I come to you with my heart open. And he vets you in light of his truth. Then you repent. Repentance is not a word for sinners. It's the name given to the process that realigns you back to God's patterns. It's called repentance. Number one. The first index that measures your spiritual growth in this kingdom write it please is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Jesus in experience of Jesus experientially or in experience Colossians chapter 1 chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15 oh dear let's see if we can hurry up and just walk on these scriptures Colossians 1 verse 3 it says if ye then be risen with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God keep reading verse 2 it says set your affections he's showing you a litmus test for your spiritual life set your affection something about your affection reveals your level of growth 
set your affection on things above he never said don't have the things of the earth but set your affection when your obsession becomes on money on titles on i must make it i must achieve it it is good to aspire to be great but if that's what controls your heart you are far from growth set your affection let's hurry up on things above not on things of the earth verse 3 for ye are dead and your life is hid with christ in god verse 4 very quickly i'll run through it it says when christ who is our life shall appear then ye sh shall ye also appear with him in glory uh-huh now mortify therefore your members that means you have a responsibility mortify your members which are upon the earth fornication uncleanliness inordinate affection evil what's that word and covetousness which is idolatry verse verse 6 it says for which things sake the wrath of god cometh upon the children of disobedience seven in the which ye also walk in some time when ye lived in them eight but now put off all these believers are we together maybe you should read the rest from here one anger number two number three number four number five nigerians repeat number five dear wonderful citizens of this great country reveal try number five again number verse nine La, hi, ah, do i say this one now <laughs> Don't worry, we are together. God is helping us. We are growing in the name of Jesus Christ. It says, lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Verse 10. And have put on a new man. Hallelujah. That new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Verse 11. We are reading to 15. Where there is neither Yoruba, nor Hausa, nor South South, nor Northerner, nor Middle Beltan, it says, but Christ is all and in all. Let me tell you this. You really know you are transformed when it is difficult for people to connect you with a physical territory. It shouldn't be so obvious that someone sees you and says you are behaving like them. Where are you from? Then it helps you to accurately get where you are coming from. It is proof that you are not transformed. You should be so transformed we, we should be we should be at a loss to connect you to a physical territory that when you tell people where you are coming from they say it's not true how come you are so refined you tell them the process is called growth growth called out of every tribe and tongue and nation into a reality that is beyond the limitations of territory let's finish up the scripture Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, uh -huh, bowels of mercy, uh -huh, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. It says, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye, 14. It says, above all these things, put on love charity there is love he calls it the bond of maturity the zenith of your maturity we're coming there 15 the last verse it says and let the peace of god garrison your heart to the which also ye are called in one body and in all that you do do not forget to be thankful so ingratitude is proof that you are a child Are we blessed? Write this scripture. We may not read it. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7. It tells us we can add to our faith certain spiritual qualities. It says, add to your faith virtue. Virtue means moral excellence. Add to virtue knowledge. Since they projected it, let's just read on verse 6. Add to knowledge self-control or temperance. Add to self-control patience. Add to patience godliness. 7. Add to godliness brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness love. This love thing again. 
Is God helping us? The Bible says in Galatians chapter 5, popular scripture and verse 22, the fruit of the Spirit. While I was studying for this meeting, if we can have it, um, if we can have it, give us the Passion Translation. Is that possible? The Passion Translation. Very powerful. The Passion Translation. If, if we can't get that, that that's all right. The Passion Translation. It puts it in a very, very exceptional and interesting way. That's all right. You can, you can just give us the version we have if the Passion Translation is not there. But it's, it's really very powerful. I just thought that if we look at it... Um, okay, yeah, let's just go back to King James. Apologize for that. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The Passion Translation says... The, the, it says, the fruit which the Holy Spirit works out through a recreated human spirit is love expressed in its various forms. Then it now begins to say joy, peace. Very, very powerful. Are we together? But let's work with what we have. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit, that means the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces in a recreated human spirit is love, and um, in its the original translation is not just love joy peace it's just love one word love but that that love expresses itself in joy are we together peace so joy is a subset of love peace is a subset of love long suffering or patience gentleness goodness faith 23 meekness temperance it says against such there is no law there is no prohibition to walking in this your degree of conformity to the image and the character of christ when people look at you they should remember jesus not you the more they see you you should be the clearest representation of jesus that they can see not by preaching something about the dexterity of the formation of christ in you should make people desire jesus are we together it is my prayer all the time that christ be formed in me the formation of christ it is my prayer that i will not just be a man of god who is preaching but that at least my life becomes a worthy representation that you can look at your life and say my god this man truly is a reflection of jesus it's a noble comment it's more than saying you're a successful man you are beautiful in all your ways that's what happens when you become like him you are beautiful in all character we must trust God by the grace of God to be men and women of solid character if your preaching is the only thing that reveals you as a Christian you are not a solid Christian if your seed is the only thing that shows you are a Christian, if your praying in tongues is the only thing that shows you are a Christian, something is wrong. Look at those who follow Jesus. Even when they tried to deny him, they had been so transformed. They looked at them and said, no, no, no. You are lying that you don't know him, but th there is something. Can you be that transformed that no matter how you pretend, someone will say, Kai, it looks like you are a pastor you say well I, i'm just i'm just they say, no, no 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 men shall call you ministers of our god that in your office the moment they want to bribe as soon as you enter they stop you don't say anything you don't judge blessings to everybody this is the day the lord has made your presence becomes such an inconvenience to darkness character It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. My heart 
with my life and everything that I have. It all belongs to you. Let's hurry up. We're wrapping up. Number two, the second biblical index to measure your spiritual growth is your depth of comprehension of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. Index number two, your depth of comprehension, your depth of knowledge, your depth of understanding of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. The degree to which you have an understanding of the principles that govern this kingdom is the degree to which you are matured spiritually. Look up please. The Bible says in Matthew 25 when you read from verse 14, the parable of the talents. I'll just pick one or two things there. Give us verse 14 please. Matthew 25. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants, watch this, and delivered unto them his goods. Verse 15. It says he gave unto one, how many talents? Help me, five talents. Number two to the other, two talents. And then the third one. It says, unto every man according to his several ability. He did not give them according to his love for them. Meaning that he had watched them for a while. And the end of the story shows he was correct. Because the man with five was the most responsible. The, one, the man with five had a lot to fight. He had pride to fight. Being the one with the highest talent. He overcame pride and was still focused and diligent. The man with two had jealousy to fight. Because knowing there was somebody above him, he conquered jealousy and still produced that. The man with one, you bury seeds, not talents. And he buried the, the talent and came. You can see that he was already offended. When they asked for him, he says, you are a hard man. You like reaping where you didn't sow. And so I thought to even pity you, I buried it. Here is your talent. And he said, you are a wicked, number one. Number two, unprofitable servant. Hallelujah. God gives unto men according to their ability that has come from their growth. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. It says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think here's the scripture not according to his power according to the power that works in us the dam brings water but the the amount of water that ends up in your bucket is according to the size of the tap not according to the potential of the dam you can turn your tap just once and it will be a drop and it will take you almost a day to have a bucket full is that true and someone can turn the tap very fast and within a minute the bucket is full the problem is not the dam the dam has the potential to fill as many buckets according to the power that works in us the capacity the day i found this i found out that the limitation in the dispensing of the grace of god is not just god's problem there is something about my capacity that needs to be built so that I can host superior dimensions of his presence and it became my pursuit to enlarge. Luke chapter 19 from verse 41 and 42. Jesus lamented two reasons why Jesus cried in the Bible. Number one was at John Lazarus' tomb when he wept because of his compassion. Second was this over Jerusalem. Three reasons I meant to say. See the third, well, he, the Bible says he cried, he was sweat, but it was like drops of blood. It says when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Why did he weep? 42. Saying, 
if thou hast known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto your peace it says but now they are hid from your eyes jesus wept over jerusalem and said jerusalem jerusalem that's the original translation if you had known even in this your time the things that pertain to your peace peace there means your wholeness but now they are hid from your eyes we must contend for spiritual truth listen to me we must contend for dimensions of truth that equip us and help us to be matured to manifest the fullness of the life and the power of god number three the third biblical index that measures spiritual growth write it down is the outworkings of the power of god in and through your life we know that you are matured to the degree to which we can see the tangible manifestation of the power and the ability of the spirit in your life the outworkings of the ability of the spirit of god in your life please write this down i think i confused two scriptures let me give you a scripture that had to do with depth of comprehension first corinthians 4 and verse 20 it says be not children in understanding i'm seeing two scriptures i omitted here be not children in understanding first corinthians 14 20 be not children in understanding write it down please then write down colossians 1 verse 9 the bible says paul was praying over the church in Colossae. that's over point two now that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will wisdom and spiritual understanding hallelujah the outworkings of his power in your life second timothy chapter 2 and verse 20 the bible says but in a great house look at me please it is not the vessels that make the house great it is the builder even though there are all kinds of vessels it's still called a great house but in a great house please keep the scripture there it says there are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of clay he said some vessels are destined unto honor some vessels are unto dishonor what is the condition verse 2 if a man will purge himself from this prune yourself from this you shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work let me tell you this by the grace of god I know a bit about the power of God. I know a bit about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I have seen the power and the grace of God. I understand a bit about the dynamics of the anointing. I can tell you this. The vessel is a very important subject as far as impartation and the administration of spiritual power is concerned. The vessel can make the oil look small. In 2 Kings chapter 4, the woman who was owing her husband died. The Bible says the prophet came and said, what do you have in your house? She said, nothing. That little jar that could feed her was listening to the conversation too. Because the anointing is a living thing. So the anointing was hearing and saying, you are calling me small. And the prophet said, you don't know. The problem is not the oil. The problem is the kind of vessel holding it. Go and borrow vessels. Expand. He said, borrow not a few. When she borrowed, it now said to pour the oil. The oil began to multiply to assume the shape of the vessel. The anointing will only be as effective as the maturity of the vessel administering it. The outworkings of the power of God. There has to come a time in your life, whether you are in ministry or not, active ministry like we know. You cannot remain with God, growing spiritually, truly, and then get to a point where the outworkings of the power of God is not visible in your life. It's impossible. Someday, you should be able to speak over someone and his and doors change. Someday, you should be able to come into your family. Help him, please. There has to be the reality. Listen to me, please. If you're a man of God here, let me tell you, it's not all about power manifestation, but there has to be a, an investment of the Spirit upon your life. There must be a signature of the Spirit. Maturity. 
then your word become like the words of God that lady wearing black I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head yes that lady looking at me I stretch my hands right now something is happening to you help her please I'm seeing oil being poured on her this is what happens this is the place of encounter One testimony that was shared here was produced by the power of the Holy Spirit your Bible says his divine power it says according as his divine power hath given us the giver is his divine power if you stand and watch doors like that you will watch it forever you will need to obtain power from on high Samson remained helpless provided there was no power but when grace came upon his life you see so when you come to church like this don't see this strange is it not written in your bible that well peter yet speak these things it says the holy ghost fell on them that had him so you go back home with an experience and like the psalmist you can say i was glad when they said to me let us go how could your life remain the same my brothers and my sisters it's impossible not the god of the bible the power of the holy ghost i believe in power i've had the opportunity in ministry to see what power can do to lives political careers it takes power to enthrone kings it's not just prophecy when you speak there must be grace that backs it i am a man under authority the centurion said and I can tell one, go, and he goeth. The power is, and he goeth. Not that I said go. I said go, and he goeth. Come, and he cometh. So you say open, and it opens. Close, and it closes. Listen, may grace come on your life this night. That many of you will return back home. 
and in the name of Jesus you will stand I'm speaking by the spirit help them please I decree and declare you will go back home like the foxes of Samson carrying supernatural power power to dislodge the workings of darkness in the name of help that woman please in the mighty name of Jesus Christ please sit down we're wrapping up can I speak to you everything that has refused to work by this time next week I stand by the spirit and the grace of God in the name of Jesus I command it to begin to walk I speak by the spirit of God help help that woman please every response you should receive you heard their testimonies I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood every frustration over over your destiny I release you from it now please sit down we're wrapping up this is koinonia number four the fourth and the last index for measuring your spiritual growth is called your love life we're wrapping up I'm opening doors opening doors that's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying I'm opening doors you will think I'm joking but you'll be surprised to see what happens I am opening doors this is what God is saying I said before you he says an open door that no man can shut I am opening doors this God speaking to someone I don't know who that person is but you came here with hunger I stand by the grace from heaven and I declare those doors those doors be open for the sake of his majesty be open be open in the name of Jesus please sit down help that woman please please sit down we're wrapping up listen to me please next week don't come to church alone don't come to church alone don't leave your loved ones behind no even if they will sit on the roof let them sit there one encounter with the power of God can open ages chapters that have been closed hallelujah we're wrapping up we have about 10 minutes and we're done for tonight please be patient with me listen please the fourth index for measuring your spiritual growth according to scripture is your love life when you read first John chapter 4 this is a very important subject your love life madam that woman come no 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 you please you don't have to stand up at random where are you coming from what's your name I'm hearing a name of pay me what's your name okay, me. the Lord is saying I should tell you this week coming this week you see coming from Monday tomorrow you will come and stand here the way doors will open in your life it will surprise you I stretch my hands and I bless you in the name of Jesus Christ you drink of this grace and you return back with strange testimonies in the name of Jesus God bless you hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching